Hello everyone, Aaron Dolan here. Today we're going to explore how to increase the current capabilities of an op amp. We'll explore this simple circuit, which adds a class B output stage consisting of an NPN and a PNP transistor. We'll then look at its performance and see the limitations. This is the schematic for the circuit we will evaluate. You'll notice that we have an LM358 op amp. That's a dual op amp. You can see we're using part B here. Part A is unused. We grounded the two input pins so that it doesn't do anything. And here are the power pins for that IC. So pin four goes to the negative 15 and pin eight goes to the positive 15. If you look at this circuit, you'll notice that it is a inverting stage. Typically, the feedback would be taken here. However, for this circuit, we've moved the feedback resistor to the output of our class B amp stage. With 10K and 1K, this amplifier will provide a gain, which is to say a voltage gain of 10. There's a few other things to notice. First, there is no biasing network for these transistors, which is generally not a good thing because there will be crossover distortion, as we'll see in a few moments. We're using incandescent lamps for the load, which are 2.5 volt lamps that I pulled from a set of holiday lights. This is what they look like when you pull them out. You pull the base off and then you straighten up the wires and they drop into a breadboard very nicely. When operating at two and a half volts, each bulb has a hot resistance of 15 ohms. And you can see this series parallel combination results in a total load of 15 ohms. The last thing to notice is that we do have some storage and decoupling capacitors on both power rails. So plus 15, there's the capacitors and minus 15 there's the capacitors. This is a picture of the breadboarded circuit. You can see the nine series parallel incandescent lamps here. The op amp is tucked away right here. The NPN TIP41 transistor and the PNP TIP42 transistor. These paper clips on top of the transistors make a nice makeshift heat sink. This is a close up of the breadboard circuit with the heat sinks removed. You can see the LM358 op amp, the NPN TIP41, and the PNP TIP42. This is the feedback path here with the 10K resistor, and then this is the 1K resistor as the input. While we have this picture up, take a close look at the legs of this transistor. Notice that I've rotated them 90 degrees. This allows the transistor to be inserted into the breadboard with less force and generally reduces the wear and tear on the breadboard itself. Let's take one last look at the schematic and then we'll move to the test equipment to see how the circuit operates. The purpose of this circuit is to boost the current from the op amp. The LM358 is limited in the current that it can supply to perhaps 100 milliamps. By adding this class B amplifier stage, we can increase that current to approximately an amp, certainly enough to drive the incandescent light bulbs shown here. Now that we understand how the op amp current booster functions, we can see how it performs. On this screen, you can see the digilant waveforms for the analog discovery. And right now we have the wave generator producing a 100 hertz, one volt sinusoid and you can see the results displayed on the oscilloscope. Let's go ahead and increase the frequency, say five kilohertz. And we can see that things aren't quite so good anymore. Remember, this is a class B amplifier, and there is a point where we switch from one transistor to the other, and what you're seeing is some severe crossover distortion. In some ways, it's easier to see that if we use a triangle wave. 
And then of course if we go to 10 kilohertz, it's just going to be worse. However, if we go to a low frequency, say down to 100 hertz, that crossover distortion is not very noticeable. Unless, that is, we reduce the voltage. If you wanted to summarize this, you might say something like, this booster with this op amp is acceptable for higher output voltages and lower frequency. You're going to have high distortion if you try to make small signals at high frequencies. For example, if we were to push this up to 2K, I don't think you would like the results very much. Yeah, that's, that's pretty ugly for small signals. But again, if we move that up to one volt, not so bad. Here's what the lamps look like in operation. They'll maintain the same brightness, fairly independent of frequency, until we get down to the point where the human eye can see the flickering. Here we can take that to an extreme. As we conclude, just remember that this simplistic current buffer does work but it has limitations. It's a class B amplifier, and it has fairly high crossover distortion, especially at higher frequencies or at lower voltages. There are better, albeit more complicated alternatives. Perhaps we can explore those in a future video. Best wishes to you as you design your project. Please leave any comments, questions, or suggestions in the space below. Thank you.